Briefs. I'm here today to talk about genetically modified foods, a highly contested and controversial topic in both science and politics today. First, I'd like to make sure we're all on the same page regarding the definition of a genetically modified food. A genetically modified food is a product of genetic transfers between species involving gene splicing. That is often confused with hybridization methods, resulting in hybrid seeds that are developed through a specific controlled cross of two parent plants. Genetically modified seeds and hybrid seeds must remain separate concepts in debating this topic. Secondly, I'd like to eliminate the goal of genetically modified foods, which is generally to increase crop yields by making a plant resistant to pests or adverse climate conditions, or to add other properties, such as increasing vitamin levels. Presumably, genetic food modification is performed with the goal of achieving food security. When looking at the pros and cons of genetically modified foods, one must call upon this goal of food security, which is defined by the World Health Organization as a state when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food to maintain a healthy and active life. In examining the benefits and harms of genetically modified foods, I often look to this concept of food security, considering benefits as an improvement in food security and harms as anything that could threaten food security. Most commonly, foods are genetically modified to be pest resistant, as this pest resistance can improve yields. Two ways to accomplish this are by making the genetically modified food pest resistant itself, or by making the genetically modified food resistant to a particular type of pesticide that is sold in conjunction with the genetically modified food seed. Pest resistant genetically modified foods show an increase in crop yields as compared to crops using no pesticides whatsoever. However, in areas where pesticides and conventional farming is accessible, genetically modified foods are largely unnecessary. For example, studies show that yield effects for insect-resistant maize in the U.S. and herbicide-tolerant soybeans in Argentina have been negligible and even slightly negative as compared to their conventional, non-GMO counterparts. Still, assuming limited pesticide availability and access in areas such as Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, genetically modified foods can increase yield gains. In other words, if a region cannot access pesticides, Food genetically modified to deter pests will absolutely improve yields and subsequently food security. However, genetically modified foods are not always more affordable or accessible than pesticides, and pesticides can often be a cheaper and less risky option. Biologically, pest-resistant crops are not permanently so, because as pest-resistant or pesticide-resistant genetically modified food crops become widespread, pests can develop resistance over time. Excessive reliance on any single pest management tool heightens the selection pressure imposed on pest populations and can set in motion evolutionary processes that ultimately will undermine efficacy. While initial yields prove higher, pest resistance could pose a threat to yields in the long term for genetically modified foods. Overall, there is much uncertainty and variability in GMO crop yields across differing strains and environments. It is important to look specifically at the type of GMO crop at hand when questioning yields because yield effects have proven small in maize and soybean, but high in cotton and tobacco, for example. Unfortunately, cotton and tobacco do not improve on food security as they are for industrial and recreational uses. However, conversations surrounding genetically modified food organisms often get lumped into debates over genetically modified organisms in general. It's important to differentiate these type of crops. Another important aspect in measuring the benefits and harms of genetically modified foods is the geographic location in which they're used. Most often, genetically modified foods are developed in the global north. They're bred for environments and crop management practices of industrial agriculture. They are often invented and initiated by commercial firms in the industrialized world, targeting the needs of farmers who are able to pay for them. GMO crops exhibit traits that allow them to compete successfully and displace related species, which can have serious consequences for biodiversity. Because the crops take over conventional strains around them, crops become monocropped, threatening biodiversity. This is more suited to large-scale agriculture for trade on an international market rather than small-scale food production for the sake of subsistence. Due to a, lar a lack of large-scale agriculture infrastructure in the Global South, farmers can struggle to successfully afford and maintain genetically modified crops. 
In addition, these small-scale farms lose biodiversity when using genetically modified food seeds, opting out of nutrient-dense farms with many different types of crops, instead opting for cash crops that can then be traded on the open market. Another aspect of biodiversity is that of agrobiodiversity, which can buffer and ensure against negative environmental effects and support the resilience of a food system under adverse conditions and climate changes. Studies have shown that aggregate production actually increases when biodiversity increases. So, monocropping with genetically modified foods, and hence losing biodiversity, could actually exacerbate food insecurity in the face of natural disasters or disruptions. Another issue regarding geographic location is that these crops are mostly tested in the global north, where the largest seed companies reside. There is a serious lack of genetically modified food assessment in global south ecologies, making genetically modified foods an uncertain prospect for biosafety and food security in the long run. Research and field trials should be undertaken in developing nations of the global south before promoting genetically modified foods in mainstream agriculture in order to ensure suitability in these climates and ecological regions. Unfortunately, most developing countries do not have adequate resources to research genetically modified food environmental interactions. Another issue in developing nations is that food security is intimately linked to small farming operations where biodiverse crops supply a variety of nutrients, rather than an industrialized nation where we monocrop singular nutrient sources and trade for more biodiverse sources on an international market. In other words, in the global north, where genetically modified foods are created, we plant the same crop, such as corn or soybean, often covering thousands of acres for the sake of efficiency. Farmers can then sell these singular crop strains around the world, bringing in income that allows them to trade for other foods, and then later down the road, filling a balanced diet with this income. This works well in the global north because farmers are also supported by farming subsidies and market protection, such as access to credit and insurance to buy and protect these seeds. In the global south, however, these markets are much weaker. Subsidies are absent, and insurance is often obsolete, making monocropping a riskier choice for citizens. If production or markets should fail, Farmers and surrounding citizens will not have access to a diverse, nutrient-dense supply of food. Markets can also be volatile, and public opinion regarding genetically modified foods could jeopardize farming operations and that have chosen genetically modified farming. Should international consumer and policy resistance escalate, such as the case in Europe and Japan, farmers lose access to key export markets, such as resistant countries, will, because resistant countries will no longer import these goods. Aside from simply providing a well-balanced diet, small farms also support the economic foundation of many communities. Studies have shown that growth and employment linkages are most powerful when agricultural growth is driven by broad-based productivity increases in rural economies dominated by small farmers. Because genetically modified foods are not an affordable solution for small farmers due to financial and infrastructural constraints, Genetically modified foods could pose a threat to food security for citizens in developing nations who depend on small farming operations to supply nutritious food staples. In addition, dependency on foreign companies with the legal rights to these seeds may be a volatile investment for protecting food security. Just three companies currently own the rights to over 50% of seed strains worldwide. Predatory patenting, and legal maneuvering threatens to deliver excessive privileges to a handful of companies. So, legal mechanisms must be put in place to protect farmers. Any reproduction of seeds can be prosecuted in a court of law for patent infringement, even if this occurs naturally through repollination, cross-pollination, or crop drift. Trade-related intellectual property rights limit farmer seed saving and trading, which have been reliable farming methods for thousands of years. This is not the case with organics, which are still allowed to be traded freely. Consequently, farmers must have the financial resources to purchase seeds and their accompanying pesticides or other inputs annually to avoid prosecution in court. 
Relying on volatile international seed companies could put farmers at the whim of price fluctuations and seed shortages. Once they have replaced their conventional or organic crops with genetically modified foods, it is hard to go back, and they must continually repurchase expensive genetically modified food seeds year after year. Genetically modified foods also have an uncertain biosafety and health record. Some studies show that genetically modified foods may contain harmful substances and allergens. However, political bodies have not assumed responsibility for confirming or denying this threat. For example, in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration does not require biosafety or health-related testing on genetically modified foods. Their policy places responsibility on the producer or manufacturer to assure the safety of the food. Because genetically modified foods are a profitable operation, they often reach the market largely untested. This area is controversial and difficult to debate as the seed companies own rights to their genetically modified foods and therefore are not responsible for testing the product that, that is in their own best interest to promote and sell. They also don't need to label the genetically modified foods either. Consequently, there is a conflicting interest here. Big agricultural giants do not feel the need to question the safety of their most profitable genetically modified food crops. Field trials are limited at best, and there has never been a long-term study providing the health of genetically mo proving the health of genetically modified foods for human consumption or environmental safety. Still, there is no hard evidence that they're dangerous either. There are many alternative options to increase crop yields and ensure food security, including organic farming techniques, conservation tillage, crossbreeding high yield varieties, promoting biodiversity, promoting conventional pesticides and herbicides, promoting chemical fertilizers, utilizing mechanisms of changing and rotating crops, and soil and water conservation strategies. While genetically modified foods may also increase yields, it is important to weigh their benefits and drawbacks and decide how to best increase yields in order to feed the world and provide food security in food-scarce regions. Truly, more research is needed, including field tests to ensure each genetically modified crop's suitability to a nation's particular ecology, and human health experimentation to ensure long-term safety of genetically modified foods for human consumption in particular. A common international rule is the precautionary principle, which states that if an action has uncertain outcomes and is at risk of causing harm to either the environment or the public, the action should be avoided until scientific consensus on the issue is reached. The question is, what is the scientific consensus on genetically modified foods? I'll leave that up to you. Happy debating!